everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today is episode 12 of the New English Knitter Knitting Podcast and I'm your host Lizzie and I'm coming to you from my home in Bergen in Norway where I live with my husband and our dog Tilly. If you're a returning viewer thank you so much for coming back. Um, I know there's so many podcast videos that you could be, um, could be watching so thank you so much for click on, clicking on mine today. And if you're a new viewer, hello and welcome. Um, I hope you enjoy today's podcast. My podcast is uh, mainly a knitting podcast where I show and talk about uh, all of my recent knitting projects. Um, although sometimes I might have a couple of other crafty bits in there as well. But it is mainly a knitting podcast. You can find me on Instagram as The New English Knitter and on Ravelry as LizzieHut94 which I'll have written in the description box below, along with the show notes for today's episode. And there'll also be a link to my projects page on Ravelry and also to my um, group over on Ravelry as well. Uh, I think that's my normal, uh, normal spiel, <laughs> normal introduction. Um, if you're new to my podcast, I tend to start with a little bit of a life update, a little bit of chit chat, um, and then I'll get on to the knitting content after that. I'll have a timestamp below if you want to uh, skip straight to the knitting content, if the chit chat is not quite your cup of tea. Speaking of tea, I have mine today. Uh, I am drinking a lemon green tea today, and uh, just enjoying being inside, uh, it's not, not that good weather today, so I thought it would be the perfect date for recording a podcast. So I think it's been uh, two, two and a half weeks since I last recorded. Um, it's not a lot that's been going on uh, in this corner of the world, really. Um, you might remember if you watched my last podcast that I had been to try on some wedding dresses um, and I did, I did actually um, get one of those wedding dresses so that was really exciting um, it's really nice to have that uh, sorted and um, even even better it was on sale <laughs> so I got to take it home with me straight away I didn't have to I think it's like six months it takes to order in a wedding dress which is just crazy but um, yeah I got to take it home with me so that's all sorted um, and obviously I'll have it fitted near the time. Um, so I am, uh, I am already married, but me and my husband, we haven't had our wedding celebration yet. So we're looking forward to that. Um, hopefully, if it goes ahead, we have it booked for June next year. Um, we'll just have to wait and see how things go. I mean, we're, we're planning on, planning for it to go ahead, but obviously things could change and we will be postponing it if if that's what needs to be done. Um, what else has been going on? Oh, yes. Cut my hair. Um, this is the second time I've actually cut my hair myself. Um, I decided to be brave and just give it a go. I've been cutting my husband's hair for, um, I don't know, at least a year, somewhere between one and two years. Um, so I figured I would give mine a go as well. I did watch some YouTube videos first. Uh, you kind of section the hair and tie it into ponytails and I've got some sharp to it anyway because like I said I've been cutting my husband's hair and also now that we've got our dog Tilly um, she's a poodle so she needs trimming quite often so I got some um, some scissors for her so yeah I'm quite happy with how it turned out um, though it, I mean I could go to the hairdresser here uh, there's not particularly any like restrictions in terms of Covid but it's very expensive. I used to um, get my hair cut back in England um, whenever I was visiting friends or family. Um, I would just get my hair cut then because it's um, it's much cheaper and um, I like my hairdresser that I have. But uh, I haven't been able to travel back to England since January. Um, so yeah, I just decided to give it a go myself. I only do, um, it's just, um, can I say? 
same length all the way around. I don't have any layers or anything, so it's a really easy haircut to do. And because of that, I just think, what is the point in spending, you know, a lot of money on it? Um, so I'm going to be continuing to do that, I think. Um, but yeah, not, not much else to say, really. Um, I've been feeling really quite tired um, recently. Um, as I said in the last episode, I haven't been sleeping very well. Um, and I do suffer with fatigue as well um, and I'm not working at the moment so I have had a, a fair bit of time for my knitting and um, my knitting really provides me with a lot of comfort um, especially on the days where I'm feeling really rubbish <laughs> um, sometimes I'm too tired to even do knitting and then you know that I'm very tired if, if I'm not even doing any knitting um, but yeah, I thought I would record today so I could give an update on some of my knitting projects. I have a couple of finished objects to show and um, a few works in progress as well. Um, I've got my dog next to me, I don't know if you can see her. So what shall I start with? Um, let's see. Recently I've been showing a lot of baby knits because somebody I know is having a baby in February. But today I have some other things to show, so if you've been really bored of the baby knits, <laughs> today's episode might be for you. But I do have one baby knit to show, so I'll start off with this one. Uh, and I did show this before. This is the uh, Tyrell Tunga uh, onesie by Shah, or um, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but I'll have it written on the screen. And this is a onesie that is... Um, it's actually knit flat, so you work it, it's worked top down, just undo the buttons here. It's worked top down flat, um, and you knit the sleeves in the round. It's got some really beautiful um, lace eyelet details, and also some uh, cables down the side, both on the front and the back. Um, and then you have some buttons uh, at the bottom, which I'll just do up here. And it's got buttons all the way up the side here. I don't know how well I'm holding that up, but um, <laughs> there's some good pictures on my projects page on Ravelry. Um, I really, really enjoyed knitting this. I made the size zero to three months. And I believe um, the sizes available are from premature to 24 months. It is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. It's 50 Norwegian kroner, which I think is around £4.30-ish. Obviously it's going to depend on the exchange rate, but at the moment that's what it is. Um, and it's a fingering weight pattern that uses, um, oh, I can't remember, somewhere between 2 and 3 millimetre needles probably. Um, it will be on Ravelry if you want to have a look. Um, but yeah, I really, really enjoyed making this. Um, it was relatively quick to knit because obviously it's a baby garment. Um, but it has a lot of interest and details in it that um, I never really got bored. Um, and there is a pattern repeat. So once you get into the swing of it, um, you don't need to concentrate too much on it. At the beginning, um, it does require some concentration because you're working flat and there's different sections where you need to be doing different things like cables or um, increases or decreases and things like that, especially in the beginning. So I used stitch markers to really mark out which area was what and pay close attention to what I was doing so I didn't make any mistakes. And then once you get a bit further down in the project, it becomes more obvious because you can see where the cables are, you can see um, where the eyelets are and things like that. So it becomes uh, a lot more kind of intuitive. I found the pattern really well written. Um, it does say that you should be kind of an in intermediate knitter to, to make this. I'd say you could probably make this if you were um, an advanced beginner. You could give it a go, I don't see why not. Um, and I know that um, when I was looking at this project on Ravelry, um, some people had had issues making it and found it difficult or found the instructions difficult to understand. I didn't have any issues and I know that the 
uh, project has been updated um, recently, I think. So I don't know if that's people that were making it before it was updated, or but I didn't have any issues. The one thing I did do, I did, I did make a mistake. Um, I forgot about the buttonholes. So in the pattern, it tells you to, you know, follow the pattern whilst at the same time doing buttonholes every however many centimetres. And I completely forgot because I was concentrating so much on the chart and things like that. Um, so I decided rather than to rip back, I would, um, rather than using buttons, I attached poppers these like snap fasteners, um, which I think for um, baby knits can be um, maybe a bit more, what's the word? Oh, I can't think today, my brain's not functioning. Uh, more appropriate, useful, what's the word? I don't know. Um, easier to put on and take off, uh, especially changing nappies and things like that. So, um, yeah, I think that was a happy mistake, to be honest. Uh, so I just sewed those on and I blocked it. And yeah, really, really happy with this one. It's so cute. Um, and I made this with, um, it's a fingering weight yarn, Trusil Baby Garn, I think, which I think you can only buy here in Norway, but you could use any commercial fingering weight yarn. It's 100% merino. Um, and I think I paid, I don't know, somewhere around between four and five pounds for a 50 gram skein. Um, and I used, I bought two skeins. I used all of the first skein and probably about 10 grams of the second one. Um, and I was thinking of maybe making a hat with what was left over, like a baby hat to go with this. Um, but I actually started to use that for something else, which I'll show later on in the podcast. But, um, you know, with two skeins, you could make this onesie and a hat. Um, you know, and if you use com commercial yarn uh, with a similar price, eight to ten pounds for two garments, I think, is um, quite affordable in my opinion. So uh, that's the first one, and that is uh, all of the baby stuff I'll be showing today. And then the next one that I have is. Um, something I've shown a couple of times on the podcast before. These are my Pricker socks by Rauma Designs. And they're a colour work sock, uh, worked top down with two different colours. So there's the main colour and the contrast colour. And I've used um, Sandless Tisu Garn. Um, I'll have the colourways down below because I can't remember them. But when I was making these, I'd finished one sock and then I was working the second sock and I ran out of the main colour, uh, the background colour. So um, I had to do a little bit of sock surgery and I had to basically rip out, I decided to rip out the ribbing of both socks, which was in the background colour to start with, and use that yarn to finish the second sock, which worked really well. I had enough yarn then to finish. Um, I did prefer the look of the socks when it had the, the background colour at the top but um, I still like them like this as well and I didn't want to buy more yarn so I'm really happy that I didn't have to. I still have a bit of the yellow left which I am going to be using for more socks and um, so I think it's worked out really well. I've done my, um, the normal heel I do is the eye of partridge heel, I really like the pattern of it. And they are a shorty sock as well. This is kind of the length that I prefer. Um, and yeah, I don't think there's much else to say about that. I knit these on a three millimeter needle. And this is a paid for pattern, um, which my mother-in-law gifted me some of the patterns by Rambo Designs. Um, I personally wouldn't pay for these patterns because um, they're not, they're not really that well written. If you know what you're doing, you can kind of figure it out yourself, but um, they're definitely not patterns where they kind of spoon feed you and tell you exactly what you need to be doing. You need to have some general knowledge first before you start. And sometimes I just want a pattern to tell me exactly what to do. I don't want to have to think and work things out. 
Um, and these are a very basic pattern. You could probably figure out yourself how to how to do this. Um, but that's those ones. Um, and I was really happy to finish those because I've been wanting to cast on other socks, but I didn't want to let myself cast on new socks without finishing those ones first. So I was really happy to finish those. Um, oh yeah, and another thing, if you're going to rip out ribbing, um, make sure you rip out in the opposite direction to how you worked the ribbing. The first sock that I tried to rip out the ribbing from, I worked from the top down and it was a pain. It took me so long. Uh, I had to like unwind from each stitch. It wouldn't just pull out easily. And then I figured, I figured out that if I uh, picked up the stitches below the ribbing and then cut and ripped that way, then it all just pulled out really easily. So make sure you undo ribbing in the opposite direction to how you did it. Don't, <laughs> don't make the same mistakes as me. Okay, so that's my two finished objects. So now I will get on to my works in progress. So first I'll show the progress that I've made on the um, Islander uh, sweater that I've been making for my husband. This is a Norwegian um, colour work design. Um, and I'm making this um, kind of like a custom custom fit jumper for him. Um, so I measured one of the jumpers that he really likes the fit of and I'm trying to make this to be of a similar fit to that one. Um, we'll see. <laughs> it's my first time doing that. Um, but I'm feeling quite positive about it. Uh, I did do a swatch and everything so I've been doing lots of maths and trying to figure everything out. Um, and I've gotten, you know, quite a quite a lot done since I last showed um, this on the podcast. Um, I did think that this would be a really tedious knit because it's so repetitive and I am making it out of a fingering weight yarn. Um, but actually I'm really enjoying this and it's working a lot quicker than I thought it would. I think because it's a four row repeat and two of those rows are uh, just the background colour, so no colour work. Um, so it kind of feels like, you know, you're achieving these like small milestones every time you get to those rounds where there's no colour work. Um, and it's a bit like if you're working striping, I guess, that um, you're just working to the next stripe, to the next stripe, to the next stripe, and then before you know it, you've worked um, quite a few centimetres. Um, so um, I would have had more of this done um, because I find it really relaxing to work on, except I ran out of the background colour. I bought three skeins of each colour to start with because I wasn't sure how much I would need. Um, if you hear anything in the background, it's just my dog. Um, we have these big windows and she barks at everything. So I've run out of the background colour. I still have, um, I've just started on the second skein of the um, contrast colour. So I have this and another skein of this left, having worked this much. Um, so I'll just need to buy some more of the background colour. Um, I'm putting that on hold for the moment, um, just for budget reasons. And I have a lot of yarn. Um, I'm coming up with quite the yarn stash now, so I feel like I should be trying to work through some of it before I buy any more. Um, also here in Norway, the postage service is not great. Um, so postage can be quite expensive. Um, so when I'm ordering yarn, I try to take advantage of the fact that if you spend a certain amount, then you get free, uh, free postage. So I'll be waiting a little bit before doing that. And this one will be parked to the side in the meantime. Um, maybe I can have it finished for spring. We'll see. There's no rush. I'm not going to stress about it. Um, Okay, and the next thing that I've been working on is something for my dog. Um, so typically, I don't put clothes on my dogs, <laughs> on my dog. I'm not that kind of person. Um, however, me and my husband and his family, we spend um, quite a bit of time um, going to 
his family's cabin, which is up in the mountains, and it does get quite cold. So um, I figured that it would be good to knit something for her to wear in the winter, um, especially when the snow comes. So I would say, on average, there's probably about a metre of snow. I don't know, it can, be, it can be less than that, and it can be way more. There was one year that we had, I think, four metres of snow and it was just, it was crazy. That's not normal, but there is snow and she doesn't have a uh, double coat. Uh, some dogs have the double coat, which means they can, like um, my parents-in-law, they have uh, a Shetland sheepdog, which has the double coat. So he can be outside sleeping in the snow, no problem. Whereas Tilly, she's a miniature poodle and she will get very cold. So I bought um, a couple of skeins of the Alaphos Lopi um, Icelandic wool, which I'm not sure if it's a, an Aran weight or a bulky weight, um, but it's, it was the thickest one that I could find that was 100% wool in my local yarn shop. And I also fell in love with this colour because... Um, yeah, I am a huge fan of burnt orange and I wanted to pick a colour that would make her very easy to spot when she's outside um, in the snow and also um, in, in the dark as well. So I did pick this orange colour um, and I decided, <laughs> I decided not to follow any pattern and just wing it a little bit um, and I also decided that this would be a great time to do my first ever uh, double knitting project. <laughs> so my first time doing double knitting, my first time knitting a dog sweater. Um, I don't really know what I expected to be honest, but um, needless to say, it has not gone uh, perfectly. <laughs> it's not gone terribly, but um, I mean, it does fit, but it's very difficult to get her legs through uh, these leg holes here. Um, and so I've decided to give it another go, basically. I'm going to rip this out and kind of rework it. Um, and I'm going to kind of change the construction slightly. So here I started at the neck, did some ribbing, knit a little bit. Um, cast off some stitches for the leg openings and went down that way. Um, this time I'm going to kind of work the other way. I'm going to, I've done her um, kind of chest measurement and I'm going to work just a tube that's going to go along her body um, to the right length and then I'll knit the top section and I'm going to have to put in some buttons some, somewhere, I think, just to make it easier to get, get it on her. Um, she was not a big fan of putting this one on. And I don't want to hurt her when doing it either. So I'm going to, yeah, I don't know, watch this space. I haven't entirely decided what I'm doing yet. Now, when I was making this one, I was using six millimetre needles um, and working double knitting. And for some reason, like this, this outside part is fine, but the inside, I mean, you can see that it's a bit longer and baggier than this knitting on the outside. And when I turn it inside out, it's just really like a lot looser. And yeah, I don't really know what happened there. Like I said, it's my first time doing double knitting. Um, and yeah, I just wasn't 100% happy with, with the fabric either. Um, so I have actually started, started the new one. And I've done a provisional cast on for now, just while I'm figuring out the construction and things. But I've actually gone down to a 5mm needle, um, so the stitches are much tighter and closer together. And I'm much preferring how this looks, and I'm hoping it's going to be a little bit warmer as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, can you tell I don't really know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I try to make it sound like I know what I'm talking about, but honestly, I don't really know what I'm doing yet, and I'm just kind of 
yeah, winging it, seeing how it goes. Um, so yeah, but if you if you know why this inside layer of the double knitting is looser, um, I would love to hear your thoughts. But this time, I'm not doing double knitting for this one. <laughs> I've given up on the double knitting for now, uh, with this project anyway. Um, now, I am actually doing some double knitting um, for some socks. So, I've always been interested in doing two socks at a time, because when I'm finished with one sock, um, yeah, some, sometimes I'm like, oh, now, now I need to do the other one when I just want to cast on a new sock or, you know, do something new. But I'm not a big fan of the magic loop uh, method. I know you can do two socks on magic loop. Um, and I have tried that in the past, but I just did not get on with it. Typically, I knit my socks with double pointed needles. That's just my preferred method. Um, and I remember watching, must be about a year ago, um, a YouTube tutorial of how to do two socks at a time on double pointed needles. And I was watching it at the time and I was a relatively new knitter back then, to be fair. But I was watching it and just thinking, Oof, <laughs> it was just too complicated. I didn't get it and I wasn't going to waste my time on it. Then doing the double knitting for um, Tilly's sweater, it just clicked. I think maybe because I was using um, bigger needles, thicker wool, two different colours, um, just really helped me to actually understand what was going on. And I thought I could do um, some socks. Uh, so I have started. Um, now, these are actually two different socks that I'm working because in order to knit two socks at a time, you need two separate skeins of yarn. You need two um, strands of yarn from separate balls to be able to work it. And typically I only buy one skein for two socks because I like to make shorties and I don't, don't want to be buying too much yarn or having too much leftovers. So I'm working two different socks at the same time. And this is the yarn that I'm using. This is Drops Fable. Um, and this is the forest colourway, and this is the, I think, grey-black colourway. I'll have them written down below with their numbers, because I know they can have different names in different countries. Um, this yarn, so far, I'm really, really loving. It's very similar to Opal and Regia, um, in terms of the thickness and the feel of it, and the fibre content as well. Um, and I am using the leftovers from, so I've got the leftovers from the other socks that I showed and the leftovers from the baby onesie. I thought these would be a good match for those colourways. So I'm going to do the cuffs and heels, maybe the toes, I haven't decided yet, in those colours. And this is how, so this is how the first one is the um, grey-black colourway you can see on the outside, that is the outside sock. And then if I peel away this sock, underneath we've got the other sock, and this is the forest colourway. Um, and I'm really liking both of these. I think I prefer the grey one just because it's more my kind, of, my kind of jam, I guess you could say. And I've just started doing the heel flap, so yeah, really enjoying this. Um, I don't think I'll always knit two socks at a time, but it just provides me with a bit of variety and a bit of interest. Um, I'm really working, enjoying working with this yarn because I really enjoy watching the colour changes. I imagine it's similar to buying hand dyed sock yarn. <clears throat> I wouldn't know because I don't have the budget to be able to afford yarn like that. Um, but I would say that this is similar to that if you're looking for a more affordable option. Um, I believe this yarn you can buy in the UK, <clears throat> for example, from Wool Warehouse uh, website for around £2.20, I think, between £2 and £3. Pounds. Um, and if you make shorties, you could probably get um, a pair of socks out of this. So that's really affordable. And yeah, really enjoying working on these. If you haven't tried doing two socks at a time on double pointed needles, I would encourage you to give it a go. Um, maybe do a project that uses bigger needles and thicker yarn and different colours like I did and it will make a bit more sense to you maybe if you found it difficult in the past. 
Okay, um, I think that's everything I've got to show today. Um, so yeah, I've been doing, doing a fair amount. Um, there are some other things I've been working on. As I've said in previous episodes, I am working on gift knitting for Christmas, but I'm not showing them yet because I want to keep them a secret, keep them a surprise. Um, and I don't know who's watching, so... <laughs> um, but if you follow me on Instagram, you might see some sneak peeks of some of those things because I know that people that I'm knitting for do not uh, follow me on Instagram. If there's anyone watching who knows me personally, <laughs> do not look at my knitting Instagram because it might be for you. Um, other than that, um, I hope everyone's doing well and enjoying some, some knitting in these difficult times. Um, make sure to uh, subscribe to my channel, it would really help me out if you would subscribe um, and give this video a thumbs up as well. Um, leave me some feedback about my, about my podcast, uh, what you enjoy seeing, what you don't enjoy seeing, um, if there's anything else I could be doing. Um, and don't forget to check out, if there's any details I've forgotten to mention, they're usually on my projects page on Ravelry, so you can have a look there. And uh, you can join my Ravelry group if you want to. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time.